Welcome to Revelation Unraveled. I'm your host, William Tapley, also known as the Third Eagle of the Apocalypse and the co-prophet of these end times. This will be just a brief follow-up to my last program about Pope Francis closing the Bishop's Synod at the Vatican in Rome. And I discovered this very interesting uh, article by Thomas J. Tobin, the Catholic Bishop of the Diocese of Providence. And here is what he wrote. He commented on the recent Synod of Bishops on the family held at the Vatican as being rather Protestant. Very interesting comment. I have been saying all along that the one world religion, even though it will be headquartered in the Vatican, will be Protestant. And added that in terms of Pope Francis' fondness for creating a mess, you can say, mission accomplished. He said the bishops voted on pastoral applications, and that was a huge error. Pope Francis is fond of creating a mess. Mission accomplished, said Bishop Tobin in his October 21st blog post at the Diocese of Providence website. Pope Francis has sometimes said he wants to create a mess in the church, meaning he wants to stir things up and challenge people to do things they may not have considered. Well, Pope Francis is definitely muddying the entire Catholic Church. And even though I believe he is the false prophet, that doesn't mean we should not pray for him because prophecy is conditional. Maybe Pope Francis can throw off his mantle of being the false prophet and force that mantle on someone else. Maybe he can save his whole own soul. Let's hope so. During the World Youth Day in Rio de Janeiro in July 2013, Pope Francis said, What is it that I expect as a consequence of World Youth Day? I want a mess. We know that in Rio there would be great disorder. But I want trouble in the diocese. Pope Francis, that is a huge error. That is not what a leader does. That is not what our first Pope, St. Peter, did. Pope Peter I taught what Jesus taught. And that is your job. Your job is not to water down the Catholic faith. We have enough of that in the Protestant denominations as it is. Commenting further on the Synod, Bishop Tobin said, The concept of having a representative body of the church voting on doctrinal applications and pastoral solutions strikes me as being rather Protestant. You are 100%. Where does the Bible say that morality is determined by popular vote? Here in America, Congress has voted for legal abortions. They have voted for gay marriage, and if they haven't voted for it, the Supreme Court has okayed it. Those are both terrible immoralities. Democracy cannot determine what you teach to your people. If you are going to be a shepherd to leading the sheep, where does the Bible say the sheep know where to go? That is not their job. Your job is to lead the sheep. I remember um, Rush Limbaugh giving this example on his radio program. He said, what if two men and one woman are marooned on a desert island? And one man speaks up and he says, let's take a vote on whether to make it legal on this island to rape women. Now, do you think even if he got a two-thirds majority, that would make rape legal? Of course not. And yet, this is what Pope Francis decided, that if two-thirds of the bishops voted on any of the propositions proposed at the Bishop's Synod, that would make it legal in the Catholic Church. That is false theology. And here's what he concluded. And this article, by the way, is from Catholic News Service, and it's dated October 22nd. At the close of the Synod, the bishops voted on all 62 paragraphs in the final document, the Relatio Synodi. And as I said, two-thirds majority does not make it right. 
I mean, if you were to ask Catholics to vote on artificial contraception, that would probably pass. That would not make it legal. And by the way, I also want to respond to Adam Aaron. He commented on the last video. He claimed that he talked with several priests who said it does not matter what the priest's intentions are. Their consecrations are valid. And I did not disagree with that under the current situation because we cannot know what their intentions are as long as the church's intention is correct. My point was, what if the church changes their intention? What if Pope Francis rules, maybe even as an experiment, that bishops can, and priests can give communion to people living in mortal sin? That would invalidate their consecrations. And the example I gave to him was from St. Thomas Aquinas, the Summa Theologica, on part three, question 64, article number eight, where St. Thomas said, the priest's intention must be the same as that of Jesus Christ and the church. And St. Thomas is correct. And we, what we are witnessing is Pope Francis in the role of the false prophet, taking away the daily sacrifice from the prince as prophesied by Daniel, as warned about by Jesus in the Olivet Discourse. The holy city in Revelation 11.2 refers to Rome, and it is being trampled under by the Gentiles. And this is a great tragedy that all of us as Catholics and Protestants also must be aware of. In fact, there are Protestants who also reject their own denominations teaching on, for example, artificial contraception and their church's teaching on divorce and remarriage. They are also those who worship at the altar, along with remnant Catholics. St. John says they are who are left of the faithful church, the true bride of Christ. And if you would like more information, especially about my unsealing of the great prophecies of Daniel, please visit my new thirdeaglemedia.com website.